Hey there, Spark fans, Rob Reynolds here. Uh, we can argue about genres or time periods or styles or even who's great and who's terrible. But one thing is inarguable. We love music. Uh, humans have been listening to music for, well, let me see if I remember my paleontology correctly, flutes have been found that were whittled out of bone from mammoths, cave bears, and vultures dating back about 50,000 years. So yeah, music, long time. And when we figured out how to capture and replay music, well, that was a game changer. We didn't have to show up and find an orchestra or a band. We could have the music in our own homes. Now, thinking back to when I was a wee lad, we used to listen to music on one of these. That's right, the old Edison wax cylinder. Put it on the gramophone, crank that up. Ah, good times. Well, eventually, technology moved forward, as it is wont to do, and people went from the cylinder to a disc. A nice disc like this, it was flat. Now, for those of you younger in the audience, you might not know that radio personalities are called DJs because in the old days they were disc jockeys from the disc. Makes sense, huh? Now, of course, from the disc, we moved on to these, the audio cassette. And these were great because these made music portable. You could take it anywhere with your big old Walkman. After that, we jumped to these, to the CD. And this was great because sound quality, all that other stuff, so much more on so much less. From there, eventually, we made our way to these. Now somewhere between here and here, we had to figure out how to encode and decode music digitally. And from that was born the first codec, which of course is portmanteau for encode decode or encoder decoder. You can argue about which it is in the comments below. Anyway, music now is encoded and decoded thanks to Codex. And this week, we have a new board for you. Introducing the new SparkFun Audio Codec Breakout. The SparkFun Audio Codec Breakout hosts the WM8960, a low-power, high-quality stereo codec featuring digital-to-audio and audio-to-digital conversion, each with signal-to-noise ratio of 98 decibels, A-weighted, with pop-and-click suppression, and 3D enhancement, which is really cool. It's got a stereo Class D speaker driver, on-chip headphone driver, and a microphone interface. It's a low power consumption board requiring low supply voltages on both analog and digital sides, but with a typical voltage for both at 3.3 volts. It also offers on-chip phase lock loop, or PLL, providing flexible clocking scheme, and is capable of nine sample rates from eight to 48 kilohertz. And the board offers a single quick connector, so if you're using multiple quick boards, this one's gonna wanna be at the end of the line. I'm here with Pete, one of our engineers. Pete and I nerd out about music a lot. Pete's a musician, I'm a musician. We nerd out a lot about music. In fact, Pete is the one who designed this codec board, and I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, um, so this codec, you explained how codecs can take sound in and then also output sound previously, right? Basically, yeah. encode, yeah. decode. Encode, decode. This can do I2S audio. So that's a specific type of digital audio communication. And you can pump sound into it and then connect that output from the codec to some speakers. You can also take analog sounds in and then process those with your DSP. Um, so I was gonna give a quick little diagram of what's inside the codec to break it down. The data sheet is a wonderful place to go. <laughs> and there are wonderful diagrams inside the data sheet explaining all the inputs and outputs. But I'm gonna try to break this down a little more simple than, than what's right here. Excellent. Yeah, so essentially we've got um, a stereo codec. So that means you can handle two channels of audio, left and right. But there's actually six inputs on this codec. So I'm gonna break it down to like this. We've got one, two, three, and then four, five, six. We'll just put some numbers on these. I'm gonna actually call this one, two, three again, but this is gonna be like the left side and this is gonna be the right side. That's how the data sheet breaks it down. Okay. Um, and so all of these inputs, there's, there's a PGA, and that stands for Programmable Gain Amp, and that's like a microphone preamp, so it gives you a first gain stage. And then we've got our ADC, which is our analog digital converter. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our DAC which is the opposite of that. So digital to analog converter. 
And then on the output, we've got more options too. So there's the headphone outputs, which um, actually work well as line level signal as well. So you can pump those straight to speakers. So that would be like left, right, and ground. Okay. And then there's also a built-in speaker amp on this thing. So then we've got four lines for speakers. So you've got speaker uh, left, well, what would that be? That'd be plus and minus, plus and minus. So we've got a left and a right. So that's kind of what's going on inside the codec. And you can decide which way you want to route all of these things. And we've written an Arduino library to easily call a function and say, I want input one to go into this amp. So bam, you're connected. I want my PGA to go into the ADC. Perfect. I want to just pass the digital audio straight through. And now I want to go to my headphones. So we've written examples on how to make this signal flow happen. And then there's actually 12 examples on how you might route all these in different ways. So one thing about microphones is that a lot of times you have a single-ended microphone, and then you might have a differential microphone. So in that case, you would take this, and it would be like your plus and minus from a differential microphone into that. So we've written examples for that too. Today, we're mostly going to deal with single-ended line level signals. Um, I should talk also about I2S. Not to be confused with I squared C. I squared C. Um, this is a digital audio pro uh, protocol. So it has like four or five lines. Um, and then this is going to want to be connected to your micro. So in this case, we're going to do ESP32. And this guy can either take sound from the ADC and digitize it, get it to your micro, or you can send it to your DAC and send it out. So ESP32 does Bluetooth. That's pretty sweet. We can pump that straight through the I2S to the DAC to some headphones or to some speakers. So we have a Bluetooth example that does that, and I believe that's what Rob's going to share. As a matter of fact, it is. I okay. just gave a quick example using the Bluetooth from my phone. I'm using our uh, Redboard IoT, which uses the ESP32. I've got that connected to our audio breakout, our codec breakout, and it's this easy. Little music on the phone, connected via Bluetooth. I hit play. It's coming through. Look at that. Sounding pretty good. No wires, I've got freedom. I can have the music playing no matter where I go with my phone. It's a nice clean sound. So as you can see, the uh, we've got our digital lines coming straight into the codec, mm -hmm. and then our analog output going to the speakers. It's yeah. pretty good, Rob. Thanks. I like what you've done here. Thanks. Well, one of our great examples. Number nine, my favorite. <laughs> oh, now, Beatles you... reference. I love that. <laughs> now, you've taken it a step further, haven't you, with your project? Yeah. Well, this is where we started. We wanted to get Bluetooth audio through the codec so you could build out your own Bluetooth speaker set or Bluetooth headphones. You can actually pass sound Bluetooth to Bluetooth and just wirelessly transmit between two ASP32s as well. Um, so there's so many options with this thing. As you can see, there's all these different inputs um, and you can mix them and match them. Um, but what I wanted to do was a project I've been working on for a while and it's actually a set of Bluetooth headphones. Um, so it looks a little crazy what's going on on top of my head here. But I'm sure you're fine going through the airport with that. <laughs> um, and what's fun about these is that Yes, I can connect over Bluetooth and then listen to sound on my headphones, um, but I've also connected some microphones to the output of my headphones. Yes. And you might ask, well, wouldn't you just take off the headphones if you need to hear the room? But um, when you're performing or rehearsing, it's really nice to have those ambient mics mixed in with your practice tracks. So that's kind of the whole purpose of this. And so in this situation, I'm actually taking a microphone into here mixing it to my headphone output. And then I'm also playing some Bluetooth from my phone straight to the ESP32 through the I2S, through the DAC, and mixing that together with my headphones. So I have a couple of potentiometers here on the top that let me set the gain on this microphone. Okay. And that kind of is the amount of room sound that I want to add in. Yeah, I'm so. I'm guessing you have an example of this, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, um, I actually, mostly use these for drum rehearsal because drums are so loud or the way that I play them, I like <laughs> to play them loud. Um, 
I don't want to expose my ears to those dangerous levels, so mm -hmm. these headphones have a really nice um, sound reduction in them. They're about 35 dB. Nice. Um, and then I can pump my practice tracks in there, and I can also actually hear the room that I'm in. Very cool. So I think we're going to head down to the basement here at SparkFun. You mean the SparkFun Sound Studio? Exactly. Excellent. And I'll, uh, we'll give a little demo down there. Great. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Here we are down in the basement. And uh, I've got my headphone project here. I'm going to do a little demo. Basically, we've got some mics on the side here that I can mix into the audio codec. And then my ESP32 is going to receive some sound from my phone and then via Bluetooth. And it's going to mix those two together for me so I can have a nice mix of playback tracks and ambient sound. I've got a couple knobs on the top of my headphones here. I'm going to kind of show a demo of what it sounds like with the mics off. It's going to be kind of dull. And then I'll creep that in a little bit and it'll get a little bit crisper. And then I'll play some playback tracks and do a little jamming. So, here's my blue knob. And basically, with the mic's off, it's super dull. I can't even hear myself. I'm having trouble controlling the volume of my voice. <laughs> so all that's pretty dull to me in my head. But then if I turn on these mics, Everything just got super crisp. That's pretty nice. I might want a little more, actually. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay. So I got a little uh, guitar and bass here on my phone. Hit play on that. See what it sounds like. Nicely done, Pete. Thanks, you know, Rob. I, I gotta say, I've played worse venues than this. Gig's a gig. You know. <laughs> so there you go, folks. That is a great demonstration by creator of the SparkFun Audio Codec Breakout, Pete. Pick up yours over at sparkfun.com, and of course, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. Great work, Pete. Thanks, Rob. Careful. And <laughs> I think I've this is a bag sealer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it again. Um, okay, coming in again. Okay. Sorry. But one thing is inarguable. 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 Okay, and I'll stand up. Okay, you'll stand? Yeah, as long as my head doesn't disappear. If it does, who cares? People have seen my head enough. <laughs>